Hello friends, Sniz here, and today we are not much closer, but uh, we are almost to February when it comes to recordings, and in the background I am doing Mr. Lee's Airlines. There is a fantastic video on why it is important to do, especially in Reboot, uh, You find it, I find it even more important to do because buffs are, well, I guess I should say, I find it even more important in a solo series to get these powerful buffs as they can help you fight harder bosses sooner rather than later. Um, misusing TV is... Uh, I, I think I originally found out about it through Nox, but misusing TV has a great guide on how to do it. Basically, in the background, I am going... I entered a quote-unquote party quest, or I guess party zone, right? And the goal is to find this book and then accept the quests associated with the book, then kill the mobs from that the quest requires to, me to do, then I turn in the quest, I get this nice little buff that gives me a hundred weapon attack and a few other things. Um, I think like 10k health and MP, but the main thing is the hundred attack. And then I leave party and I'm back where I started. So yeah, and there's really not much to say since there's already such a well thought out uh, tutorial on it, but if you really just need to know, there are, once I've gotten the quest, and once I've gotten the quest, you accept it, of course, through the light bulb, and then you are required to kill 30 wolves, a uh, 100 hyenas, a 100 canines, and then 10 hogs. The hogs is the only tricky part because uh, you it only spawns one hog per map, and you cannot respawn the hog until you leave the map. So what people will do is they'll leave the map and then immediately re-enter the map. Um, yes, the maps are RNG on the island, but that's only if you go... Let's say there's A, B, and C maps. If you go from A to B, A and B will not change location. If you just go between A, B, and B, A, you, you, the maps will not change. If you go between... If you go from A all the way to C, C will be randomized. And then if you go from C all the way to A, A will be a different map. But B will be the same, as long as you don't leave it as like the third map you're entering. Um, I don't really know how to explain it well. Just, if when you find hogs, kill 10 of them by leaving and re-entering the map without going far away. And then after that, you turn in your quest, you're awarded with your handy little buff, you can only get one a day. So it is technically a daily. And you're on your way. I find these super handy and I blow through a ton of them when I fight hard Golix, which you'll see because it'll probably just be a compilation of me uh, running in, dying, saying, oh, I guess that's it, and then leaving, even though I had more than enough more than enough damage to kill it. It's just that I refused to learn the mechanics instead of, in, and instead wanted to edge it, which wasn't the smartest thing. Uh, would have made a lot more progress a lot quicker if I decided. But part of this being a new player's guide is that I am a new player myself in a lot of ways. So other than that, I'll see you in the next clip I managed to dig up. One great thing about going back through these old clips I have is that I forgot I forgot that I record audio, so sometimes you hear some great snippets that you didn't think you would hear again. Uh, but that's off topic since I won't ever, or I'll very rarely include them in the video themselves. Uh, but on topic, uh, I am doing another party quest. And I do say party quest a lot, or party zone, or whatever, but... Party just means in a party, as in GUI is, says my name is in it. I don't have any friends in it, and... Uh, very good definition of party. Anyways, this is Dimension Invasion Party Quest. It opens up around level 140 and does not have anything worth noting if you're getting carried, but for me, since I'm choosing to do this all solo style, uh, there is a chance for you to fight a boss at the end of the party quest or party, yeah, party quest, uh, called Blackheart. It's a big little black demon that Hilla keeps as a pet, and if you fight it, it drops a box, and in the box you have a chance to get one of four parts of the high-quality dimension gloves. Once you have all four parts, you can combine them all and make the high-quality dimension gloves, which, from the future, yes, I did manage to get, and I'm very happy about. But, uh, back then, I was cursing myself every single time it was not Hilla, and, or Hilla's 
pet, and I was even more infuriated when I did manage to get Hilla's pet, and it did not give me uh, a glove piece, or if it did, it gave me a duplicate. That was even more infuriating. But as you can see, I'm also level 190, and <laughs> I keep forgetting, 200 is kind of a big deal, but I have taken so long to make these videos that I'm already well past 200, and I'm like, huh. Yeah, that was a that was a stage where I was not even 200. I didn't have even have a two at the beginning of my my level. Yeah, that was missing. But yeah, that's just a brief summary of dimension invasion. Basically, you go through these stages and you have to prevent that bar beneath the timer from going big red because big red means uh, big no no means uh, you lose. And then if you get through all the stages without it going red and kicking you out, you get to fight a bonus stage. And the bonus stage, again, varies. You can get Blackheart, which is uh, the one I wanted. Uh, I don't know why you would want anything else. Uh, Blackheart is technically a boss. It's a mini boss. Damage-wise, I think I only had like 200, 300,000 range? I don't know. I don't know if I open up my stat window. Uh, the main thing to note is it has damage reflect. As long as you can avoid the damage reflect, you should be able to kill it since it doesn't heal that much, to my knowledge. Uh, also, I'm using a terrible effect uh, with for my numbers, so I'm sorry if I'm hurting anyone's eyes. You're probably A few of you are probably blind now. Also, it hits really hard when it does hit. Um, don't know why, but it did. Uh, it can split into multiple where you kill all of them, then it goes back together, then you can finally do damage to the actual boss. But funny enough, the boss just kind of goes invisible. It can still actually cast animations and hurt you, even though there's all these little mini ones and you can't hit the main boss itself. Interesting, at least in my opinion. I just realized I've only recorded like 7 minutes of video, so I'm going to try and just make these 20 minutes long and... I guess recapping everything as quickly as possible, so I will see you in the next clip. Just wanted to take a quick stop and say, oh, I made another Kana. Uh, you never really saw the other Kana except for the fact I got a Link skill out of it. Well, just keep in mind there's another Kana because this was back when Suicide Kanas were at an all-time high and they are still pretty, uh, one of the most common ways to make Meso early game, but, uh, yeah, I made a second Kana because I leveled the other one to 151, and I can't deal with my imperfections, so I had to make another one. Oh, you can't see my hand, but I'm giving myself a thumbs up because that is what any sane and rational person will do when they go up by one level and lose two to four extra meso percent. Don't do what I did. Or just never... Never make a mistake and level up. Those are really, really contradictory points. I'll see you in the next clip. Hey, did you want to spend like 15, 10, 10 minutes watching me fight uh, Golix? That's not very difficult. And then losing on the last stage because I don't know how reverse controls insta kill you at this point and I don't know how to avoid it. Uh, yeah, me neither. So just gonna flash the death screen on on there, show the f death, show the fact that fast forward, die a b bunch, fighting Golix, yeah. I'll get there someday. Uh, killing Golix, that is. Today's not that day. Hello, uh, I may be sounding like I'm just coming back, uh, from a long hiatus or break, and that is true, I slept before recording this next part, but. I do feel it necessary to include as much as possible in these videos, and I wanted to leave this out since it's an event, but it does contain the best in slot item, and I think the only Android part in Reboot that you can keep permanently. So yes, while it has passed, it was very important. There was two seasons of it, so I'm willing to bet it's going to come back again, especially since it was a best in slot item. Um, it was an annoying jump class. This what you're watching in the background is actually my first time ever doing it. I just took me like half an hour, uh, I think, to fully complete it for the first time. This wasn't a speed run or anything. This was just on my Thunderbreaker, uh, trying it for the first time because I kept getting told it was hard and difficult. And it is true. It is hard and difficult. And I got the easy version of it, so I was very blessed. 
Uh, basically, there is a stage where, I think it's the second to last stage, B1, where you have to go through this elaborate uh, steam and pipe uh, combination without getting touched by either because you'll just instantly die and then come all the way back once you get to the other side because uh, the door on the other side is locked. Either way, uh, you used to have to do that in one full swing, like you had to get to the right side, then go backtrack all the way to the left side, all in one go. Now they gave you a checkpoint on the right hand side. So if you make it all the way to the right, you have, you have your checkpoint at the right hand until you make it all the way back to the left or you run out of time, because the stages are also timed. They give you more than plenty of time, so you can make a bunch of mistakes and still get through. I think I was talking to Andy or Sauce MS while I was doing this and I was just getting, I don't even remember what I said, I just remember being very, very quiet because I was so focused and then getting told like, wow, you actually completed it that fast, which is kind of why I uploaded that speed run way back because I was really inexperienced. I was really proud of myself for managing it in 20 minutes or whatever time I got. Uh, so yeah, the the main takeaway from this is it's an event, it's going to award you the best in slot heart. You have to have rescued at least one android, which the first one is Aster. And uh, after rescuing her, you can participate in this event, uh, well, this other side activity to gain coins to buy the one droid heart. But you must have saved uh, the android that you want to follow you, like the actual android itself, not the heart. You have to have rescued via the the mini game, the jump quest, before you can buy it. The heart you can buy after you rescuing, rescuing Aster. You're limited to one, so thankfully uh, they don't make it. They didn't make it, so we can go up to 15 star with a chance of booming. And now, from talking from the standpoint, we're hearing rumors of 25 star from Arwu himself. So honestly, don't know what's going to be going on with best and slot and all that. But I can tell you, this jump quest was hell. Uh, at least at the beginning. I hate to admit it, but it was hell at the beginning, like I said, but once I got the hang of it, uh, I did it, uh, I, there's two seasons. You have to complete all of the androids before you unlock season two. I got to both, I unlocked both Adam and Eve on two accounts and got uh, season two unlocked on a third character. Yeah, I might've, I kind of got obsessed with it. Like I was like, I would do the one jump quest and then it'd be like, oh, that was too easy. And then you are given another access key to re-enter and try and save another Android. But if you mess up too early, you just get kicked out, right? So I would try my hardest not to mess up so I could rescue two Androids in a day. And if I manage that, uh, I just go on my uh, Buccaneer, which is my secondary main that I play with my girlfriend. And I would do that. I would just play that and I'm kind of glad because the Buccaneer sat on the back burner for a long time. I think I just, I we really just started playing it because she found out she likes Buck more than everything else she has played so far. Um, that's another topic and I should have uploaded a video a while ago talking about streaming already uh, because she, she and I play our Bucks together while I just solo on my Thunderbreaker. Um, again, another topic for another time. The main point is one droid's on in the background. I've completed both seasons twice, uh, once on the Thunderbreaker and once on the Buccaneer. And then on a band, uh, a Shadower, I was thinking about second maining before I settled on the Buck. I got up to, <laughs> I got up to right before Eve. So yeah, I I, used, uh, I I I did the jump quest a lot. Uh, so much to the point where I think I was aiming for like sub fifteen minute runs because I just got so bored of like I would get mad at myself if I messed up actually, because I just found it so easy uh, towards the end. But like everything, it takes practice. Because right now I'm missing the simplest jumps that I'm watching back. So I feel like I'm going in a tailspin, but this 
heart is permanent because other hearts in reboot are not permanent they last like a week to a month sometimes you get them from events but again they only last like a week or a month this is the one event that gives you a permanent heart it is level 120 comes with a decent amount of stats can be 12 starred and potential that's the main thing because it's just another item you can put three lines of potential on rolling your heart is actually probably the easiest thing to do um for stats like percent stat just due to like how limited it is on what lines you can get so i guess i should have just been grateful that this came around and i'm just glad i had the willpower to put myself through the hell of or the initial hell of getting through it why i chose to continue to torture myself afterwards is unknown even to me but i have eve and she's kind of cute i guess for as pixels go yikes